after this election, is there any danger um, for Ukraine to take steps backward uh, in its democratic development or, and, or even integration with the West? Mm. I've heard this concern expressed as well, um, but uh, I'm impressed at how horizontal Ukraine is. By horizontal, I mean there are a lot of different power centers. For good and bad, there are a lot of different economic groups and business groups. There's a lot of media, as Nadia says. Um, there, there politically, there are divisions that we know, and some of, the, some of these divisions are problematic. However, it suggests to me that this horizontal organization that characterizes Ukraine is more democratic, mm -hmm. and it is not the vertical uh, of the Russians. Then the vertical is less democratic and frankly more fragile, in my view. So Ukraine can hold his, its I am confident people. Ukraine will hold on to its democracy. Well, I, I, I hope that's right, and I agree with all of those, uh, with, with what Bill said. But there, there is always a danger of backsliding, and I, I would say that. Um, Anyone who takes power um, as, as the president uh, after these elections really should work together with the parliament to actually get the laws and the institutions in place that would prevent a backsliding into any kind of authoritarianism. I think the, the, the Ukrainians um, probably would fight back very, very strongly if that, if that was a tendency that started to happen. But at the moment, um, the, the, the legal framework and the institutions, and particularly the the judicial system really has not changed much over the last four years and all of those elements have to be in place to institutionally prevent backsliding so that uh, power cannot be exercised in an authoritarian way and that has to be done um, I think um, fairly uh, solidly. I would agree with Bill that the sort of multitude of actors and uh, conflicting interests in Ukrainian society prevent um, the sort of Russian model from being adopted. However, uh, I'm not sure that it necessarily leads towards democracy. It sort of creates a, a tendency towards pluralism. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, democracy is a much more sort of rich concept and, and a complex uh, political system. Um, so my fear uh, really is that um, a uh, election that isn't conducted in uh, a free and fair manner or an election that ends up being decided not at the ballot box but in the courts or on the streets will sour Ukrainians even more than they already are on democracy. I mean, if you look currently, um, under 20 percent of Ukrainians have faith in democratic institutions in their country. Seventy-five percent see their country descending into chaos and instability. Only a third think that, that elections actually have any impact on uh, the way their country um, progresses. So um, it's really important that uh, these elections are uh, a success in terms of their democratic uh, credentials so that um, you don't have a sort of continued and deepening of disillusionment amongst the Ukrainian public. I have a few more questions. I'm, I hear that uh, we don't have time, but I will try to ask and probably use it later. Um, uh, recently, Matthew um, Kaminsky wrote in Wall Street Journal, um, Ukraine needs West uh, support. Do you agree? And if yes, uh, what can West uh, do for Ukraine? Ukraine does need support from the West. It, uh, it needs uh, open markets that uh, Ukraine can sell its steel and its grain into. Um, it needs a goal um, to help it reform its institutions, as Nadia rightly points out. And the best thing that the international community can do for Ukraine um, is for the European Union to indicate to Ukraine that someday, someday, um, when they meet all the requirements, Ukraine can be a member of that organization. So yeah, I think there are things that can be done to enable its economy and to give it direction for its reform. Nadia. Hmm. I, um, I, I th think all, all of that is right. Um, I sometimes despair of my colleagues here in Washington who, who kind of say, well, we're, we're, we're fatigued from Ukraine. I think this came up in our, our, our last session. And I, I would like for my, my colleagues and friends, at least here, with whom we whom I can speak, to maybe have a little less fatigue with Ukraine. because. Uh, 
after all, it, it's, a, it's a long road and, and, and they've done fairly well so far. And uh, we can't exert so much influence over our European colleagues, but I think uh, you know, our European colleagues really need to get that message too. And I would say as well that there are some Ukrainians who um, I saw in Davos this, this weekend, for example, um, Ukrainians coming back to Ukraine or saying, no one here in Europe is interested in us. No one here really is waiting for us to enter Europe. Um, they also shouldn't be so pessimistic they should actually come up with some plans and be very positive about um, about their European aspirations. And I think maybe changing some of those things would uh, would help to move this uh, along a little. So. I think um, it's uh, it should be pointed out that the Ukrainians don't make it easy uh, for the West <laughs> to engage. Um, and although I think fatigue is a mistake, um, it's uh, it's tough to engage when your partner is uh, in, um, well, it's how to put it delicately, um, is uh, not exactly coherent in the way they approach you. Um, but I think uh, I 100% agree with Bill and that it really what the West can provide are incentives um, for Ukraine to head in a more democratic, more free market orientation and head towards closer integration with Europe. Um, in the short term, I would argue that uh, what the West can do is try to put as much pressure as possible on the candidates to conduct uh, the elections um, in a way that um, comports with uh, democratic standards and to avoid the kind of scenarios we were discussing earlier um, where things might be decided in the courts. Right. Uh, last question. Um, we, have, we would have a new president very soon, probably next Monday, hopefully, right? Um, what um, should his or her priority be? I think he or she um, needs to do what they have all promised, all of the, almost all, certainly all the responsible candidates, and, and these two as well included, um, have indicated the need for reform. Um, the economic reform, the judicial reform, that uh, has been promised, the anti-corruption work that they, all the candidates say they want to do. Now's the time. Now's the time to do that. Uh, that is um, assuming that there is going to be uh, a clear winner. And uh, you know, I'd just like to repeat what I said before. I think Ukrainians really need to make an actual choice so that there is no doubt who the president is going to be uh, next Monday. Uh, and then the president, whoever it is, uh, needs to recognize that uh, a lot of time has actually been lost. A lot of time uh, has been lost in the parliament. A lot of time has been lost uh, with the Ukrainian government just I in general. Uh, there needs to be some kind of reconciliation. And all of those reforms that have been um, waiting to be passed and to be moved forward really need to be worked on very quickly because the Ukraine, Ukraine needs to get on with it. It's, it's population and the citizens are waiting. Sam, you lost. Um, I would just, uh, in terms of what kinds of reform uh, should be at the top of agen the agenda, I think you know, getting in compliance with the IMF's conditions to, for the next tranche of its major loan and receiving that loan, um, and then uh, energy reform, which is a major priority of the U.S. government and its relationship with Ukraine. Um, but these are steps that really need to be taken if Ukraine is to both economically succeed and improve its relationships with the West. Um, I think that should be a priority as well, sort of gaining, regaining credibility uh, in European capitals in Washington. Um, but also, uh, the current state of Ukraine's relations with Russia is untenable. Um, it's reached a, a low point, and um, I think either president will, uh, either candidate, when he or she becomes president, um, will uh, have to make that a priority as well. Thank you so much.